Hi you guys, my name is Kendria and this is my very first YouTube video. Uh, I'm so excited to start this new channel. So the reason I decided to start the channel is because people always ask me, oh my God, how do you do your head wraps? How do you do your makeup? Things of that sort. So I decided to just go ahead and start a YouTube just to give you guys some tips and tricks on how to keep it cute. Okay, so I am going to be doing a simple makeup look and I'm going to be showing you um, the different products that I use when I do my makeup. I am also going to show you how I do one of my famous head wraps that I just love to wear. Super cute, super comfortable um, at the end of this video. So stay tuned. So since this is my very first video, I'm just going to be going through and kind of talking about the different products that I use. Um, I'm not, you know, a professional makeup artist. I just enjoy doing my makeup for fun and I do other people's makeup whenever they ask me. So I don't have, you know, uh, the Morphe, the Fenty, but I do have some great products. So, um, Stay tuned for those. So step one, I always like to start with my eyebrows and I'm gonna show you guys the pencil that I use for my brows. Um, so it's kind of short right now cause I always use it. But this is just the Wet n Wild um, pencil in brown. You can find it at Walmart, your local beauty supply store. It runs for about a dollar, 98 cents, something around that price. Okay, and I just have a little eyebrow brush that I use to kind of just fluff out my eyebrows before I get started okay now I like to brush them up because my hairs are long and if you brush your eyebrows up you can see what you need to line where you need to go that type of thing so I'm just gonna take my brow pencil and when you start lining your brow you don't want to start too close to the edge you want to start about right here, okay? So you just take that pencil and you just kind of follow the natural shape of your brow. I always start off a little bit light just in case it comes out too dark or I mess up. I don't want to have to go back and, you know, redo everything over. So, yeah. And then you do the same thing across the top as you can see it look a little crazy right now but trust the process is okay and i'm just gonna take my brow and fill in that missing space and then take my little fluffer and just kind of like flush fluff my brows to make them look more natural now at the front of the brow you want to go ahead and fluff it and then kind of make that line just blend in nothing noticeable you always want the beginning of your brows to just look natural not blocky not you know too big just natural okay if you have weird brows like me like the beginning of my brows are kind of non-existent you might want to take your pencil and just like do a couple of little strokes okay and sometimes they might be a little too dark especially if you're a little bit heavy-handed like me just take your brow brush and kind of just like brush it up okay
all right so here are our brows before we go around them with the concealer um sometimes you know your brows might look a little uneven you can just kind of like touch them up a little bit before you conceal but normally pretty much after you conceal they'll pretty much even out so you don't really have to worry about that if you don't want to um let me just grab my makeup brush that i'm gonna start using for my brows all right so i'm not gonna lie normally for my brows i use a smaller brush but i've been seeing a lot of um youtubers beauty influencers use um this type of brush and this is just the morphe m167 brush if you can see that and then for my brows i always conceal with my beauty supply store concealer it's only about a dollar or two okay i always choose a, a color that's a bit lighter than my skin so that these brows can be popping popping all right you just want to take your brush and you want to put a little concealer on it not too much just to line it um and so you will go right underneath the brow with the concealer as straight as you can. All right. And you may need to go back a second time. Just to kind of re-hit underneath that eye. You know, don't be scared of the concealer. You can pile on as much as you need. To get that really clean underbrow look. Bam popping already and like i said you are might want you're probably gonna make some mistakes it's okay to go back over it you know if you need to with your pencil where you might have gotten some concealer in your brow and just kind of line it up so that it won't look all all sloppy okay and i'm gonna go ahead and do the other side now, a great tip to kind of make sure that your brows are even is to kind of make the concealer come out a little bit. Some people go all the way out in their face. I don't do that, but you can. Um, that'll kind of help you see if your brows are even and if they line up. And I'm not going to lie to you, I'm right-handed, so my left brow is always a little bit trickier than my right brow but it's okay we're gonna get it right we're gonna get it right get it tight okay bam brows are lined okay now you want to go ahead and for the eyeshadow base especially um if you're one if you're trying to do like brighter colors even if you're not trying to do brighter colors you still want to do a base just to get the best possible result from your eyeshadows go ahead and take the brush and kind of just like spread that concealer all over your eye Make sure that it's pretty even. Um, me personally, I just brush mine and I kind of look at it and tell if it's even or not. Um, if you think it looks a little bit blotchy, don't be afraid to take your brush and just kind of pat it in. And the reason I say this is because this is very important if you want to get a flawless
a flawless eyeshadow look okay it's very important that your base is flawless as you can see, I kind of messed up right there with my concealer, so I'm just going to go back with my brow pencil and just color right on top of that. Boom. No big deal. Okay. Now I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to do the same thing to the other side with my concealer. And guys, you always want to get a concealer that's at least um one to two shades lighter. all right you want to get a concealer that's one to two shades lighter that's what i was saying and my audio for this part um the, well there was no audio because i wasn't talking but now i'm just gonna take a concealer that's a bit darker about closer to the same color as my skin and i'm gonna use this one to line the top of my brows Alright guys, so normally after this step, this is where I like to take a, um, as you can see it's dirty because I use it a lot, but I like to take a sponge of some sort and kind of just go in and like dab and just make sure that that um, concealer is super sealed and flat, kind of like fix any little mistakes that I might have made and I didn't realize. especially near the brow um especially close to the brow you want to make sure that foundation is really really thick so that when you put on your shadow it can be popping pop, 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 popping okay so that concealer is pretty set i'm gonna go ahead and start rubbing this in right here just so it's not um too hard to blend when I get ready to do my foundation okay so as you can see my brows look pretty even pretty even and there's another trick too where you can like draw I know it sounds crazy but it works you can draw like a plus sign right in the middle of your forehead and it'll help you kind of like map out where to draw your lines evenly I'll do another video showing y'all how to do it okay so now I'm going to start with my shadows. And here I have the Zulu palette by Julius. And I am going to go in and I will be using these three colors. Okay. I'm going to do like a subtle tone look today. Nothing too crazy. And it won't be a cut crease. It'll just be my, I call it my sunset. Juvia's makeup. with the V. Um, my apologies. My three tones that I mix together. So for the first one, you always want to go in. For this type of look with the darkest color on the lid and kind of work your way up now normally if i was doing the cut crease i would go with the darkest color on the crease and then go lighter and then put my lightest color on the lid but since i'm not doing the cut crease i'm going to start with the darkest color on the lid okay and the darkest color in this palette would be this one i'm just going to take my brush and dip it and don't be afraid to dip your brush okay and this is just a wet and wild brush from walmart 98 cent to a dollar okay and we're gonna go ahead and just start applying that shadow to the lid okay and you can apply as much or as little as you would like there's really no right or wrong when it comes to doing your makeup okay i will say just try to like when you are applying shadows try to apply them pretty evenly and don't worry if you get some fallout you know that'll happen 
happens a lot of time with me. That's why I do my eye makeup before I do my face, okay? And you just wanna go ahead. I like to just go ahead and get both sides done. Um, most of the times, but right now for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna do one side at a time. Okay, so now that I have that color, I'm gonna go in with the, the color that's a shade lighter, which is this orange. And for this one, I'm using my, I don't know if y'all can see this, hold on. My Mary Kay brush, okay. This brush right here is so tiny and cute, but it gets the job done, okay. Love, love, love this brush. So I'm just gonna kinda dip that in my orange, and I'm gonna go right on top of that brown with this orange and just kind of lay it on there. Okay. Like I said, don't be afraid to dip into color. Um, don't be afraid to have fun with your makeup. Like, it's just makeup, okay? And if you mess up, or see how my colors are kind of too close together so they're starting to blend. I'm just gonna go back and hit it with my other brush, a little more of this brown color. And what I might, what you might even wanna do is go in with a different palette. Like I have this palette right here. This is the Revolution Reloaded palette I bought from Ulta. It has a bunch of neutral tones in it. So I'm gonna go back over that um, lighter brown part and I'm gonna hit it with a, this dark brown right here. As you can tell, this is one of my favorite shadows. Super cute, super just not doing the, much, the most, okay? And a lot of times you might get fallout that falls on your face. Just you know, get a makeup brush, wipe it away. Okay. All right, now for the next part or the top of the lid, you wanna go in with the yellow. Okay, and I'm using once again, my eye detail precision Mary Kay brush. You're gonna go in and you are going to just go right on top of that orange with this yellow. Now you do kinda want this to go near, not touching, near the brow bone, just to give your eye, um, your eyebrows that popping effect. Do you see that? Let me kinda brush off that fallout do you do you see how now it's fading into like that beautiful sunset tone okay and so now that you have those colors on there I don't like I mean I like for my eyebrows to pop but I don't like for them to be too you know, crazy. I like from look kind of natural. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take my brush that I use, all three brushes, and I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side. Starting back with this brown here. You wanna get the lash as close to your eyes as possible without poking yourself. And then once you do, I like to take my tweezers. You can use your hands. I see a lot of people use their hands to do this part. I like take my, my tweezers and squeeze. All right, so All right. I don't know what happened to the first part of this clip, but it's okay. And now what you see me doing is I'm just using some eyelashes I bought from my local hair store, um, beauty supply store. They cost about $3, nothing major, okay? And I'm using tweezers and hair glue for my lashes. Now, if you're allergic to silicone, of course you can always find an alternative glue for this, but 
um you can see how i put it on when i put on the next one so i'm gonna let you watch that part a piece of the lash trying to put it on your clippers okay once again i'm just gonna cut off that little piece that little excess i don't need lash is not that long okay dipping it in my glue again because at this point the glue that you had before is probably dried up and you can use the other end if you want i just use the same end just it's because i'm lazy and i do okay same process rub the glue all the way on the lash and then once you got it all right and if you're wondering what is that that i'm using to put the glue on my lashes it's just like a q-tip so you can use a q-tip to apply just a little bit of hair glue onto the lash and you want to make sure that you have a mirror so that you can look down into the mirror while you're applying the lashes now hair glue is a gray color which is why a lot of times i put um I put eyeliner down first, and then you wanna mash them together. So that way, if I do kinda of like mess up when placing my lash, or like sometimes they don't wanna stick, you have to keep reapplying them, you won't see that glue. You'll have that seamless, seamless application. Okay? Now. Now here's the part where I like to kind of like do a little shimmer in my inner corners. Okay. And here I have the Fenty Galaxy palette. Love, 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 love. It's a shimmer palette. Very old. I use this palette for everything. You'll also see me use it later on for a highlighter. Everybody asks me, oh my God, where you get your highlighter, girl? It's an eyeshadow. Okay, so I'm gonna take the, um, you know, since my colors are like orange and brown, I'm gonna go with this bronze color. And I might even dip into the gold a little bit. I know it looks like there's nothing there, but trust me, sis, it's there. And I'm just gonna slowly apply that to the corner of my eye. Just to give it a little, you know, razzle dazzle. Now you can go in as far as you like or not. I like to kind of stay within a good, good zone, good area. So I'll apply right here and then maybe go in a little bit, but no further into the crease because you don't want to ruin your shadow that you've already worked so hard on okay now i also like to take a little bit and just kind of like go on my waterline just for the extra pow you know what i mean And be careful not to poke yourself in the eye when you're doing this or to get it in your eye because as you can see, it is like a dust type of shimmer. So you can very easily mis make a mistake and poke yourself in the eye or get dust all in your eyes. And we don't want that, okay? We do not want that okay so eyeshadow aside let's get into the face the skin what everybody has been waiting well, you know. on so oh here i have my mary Kay cc cream and it has spf 15 and this is in the shade um very deep 
okay it's in the shade very deep it's right there on the back at the top okay and i'm just gonna put a little bit on here on my face don't take a lot just to kind of color correct in those spots that aren't quite you know it's pigmented or where you got some of that fallout you can use some of this color correct before we apply our foundation okay so for this i'm gonna grab one of my old um you know just foundation brushes a little fluffy and i'm just gonna take it and kind of just blend that blend that cc cream in and y'all oh my gosh look at the freaking do you do you see this look at the coverage and this is my exact tone it has my skin feeling so good do y'all do y'all see this oh and another reason that i love these mary Kay products is because they are affordable like last you a good while and you don't have to worry about coverage like you know you know you're gonna have some good coverage with these Mary Kay products. Okay, and I have a little bit left. I'm just gonna take it and put it right here where I had that lighter color um, foundation and just kind of land that out before we even apply our foundation. Now, CC creams are not just for color correct okay if you have skin that isn't really blemished or is pretty even toned you can use it as a as a foundation like as you can see the coverage is great you don't really need to use much look at that i mean what more can i say okay now i'm gonna go back in because i see my brows are still looking a little bit light and you don't want that kind of like blend that out right up in there okay come over here and do the same thing okay so now that we have our cc cream we're gonna get into our foundation this one is called believe beauty it's in the color chestnut and i've actually found this at walmart as well guys actually no dollar general dollar general can you believe that dollar general okay and i'm just gonna apply a little bit all right put on my cc cream so it don't take that much just gonna put a couple of squirts here and there okay and for foundation, I like to use a beauty blender just so I can get all the areas and they won't look so, you know, streaky, okay? So you just take it and you literally blend, like your life depends on it. Dollar General, y'all. So as you can see, I have my full coverage foundation on. It's not as, it's a little bit more glossy than I would like. Um, so I'm just gonna go on top of it. And hit it with my Kiss powder. I got this at the beauty supply store, $7.99. Okay. Y'all, like, I, I do believe that, you know, you get what you spent 
whatever you pay for is what you get but i don't believe in spending an arm and leg on all makeup products you know what i'm saying especially if you can find some that get the job done for cheap okay now so i'm just gonna take my powder brush dip it and i'm just gonna go in and kind of just dab the powder all over my all over my face to kind of just tone down that um, that foundation. Okay. And now that I have it as mad as I want, looking good, looking good. Now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna get my Black Radiance Loose loose Setting Powder, okay? And I'm just gonna take a little bit of this. Don't need much, it comes with a little pad in it. And I'm just gonna go right here up under my eye area by my nose and just set this makeup and the reason i'm doing this is because these are the areas that tend to get a little oily like the longer i wear my makeup And you know nothing can ruin a makeup look quicker than a oily makeup look. Okay, and I don't want, you don't have to use a lot. It don't take a, a whole lot. Okay, now while I'm letting that sit, I'm gonna go in and blush and highlight. Okay, my blush is this burgundy little color um oh brick house 8315 it's black radiance walmart can't remember how much i paid for it probably like four dollars um and i like it because i'm darker skin and it's a deeper tone so i just take my little blush brush and just brush across it a little bit and i'm just gonna you know apply just enough to where you can see the rosiness in my cheeks not too much and sometimes i like take a little bit and just put it on my nose right there just bring a little more color to the face so to speak okay so after i've done that i'm gonna go back to the fancy shadow um palette and I'm gonna choose the, um, I'm gonna dip into this one, this shimmer, cause it's kinda like a rosy gold color. And I'm using my slanted highlighter brush, Wet n Wild. I bought this one a while ago, probably like a dollar. And I'm just gonna apply that shimmer. You see that? And I kind of like it because it's the same color as the blush. And it makes those jaw bones just pop. Now, if you need to, you can make fish face while you were applying this. And then, like, take a little bit. I put on my nose. You know, not too much, just a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and brush off this. This loose powder. Make sure that you brush it off good. Don't want to be out here looking crazy. Okay. Now that that is done i'm gonna go ahead and 
first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and put my glasses back on so I can see what I'm looking like. Ooh, she cute or whatever. Okay. Very subtle, nothing too crazy. And as I'm looking at myself, I'm not really feeling my eyebrows right now. They look a little too shiny to me on camera. And also not blended enough. I think I'm just going to blend those a little bit more. And I've seen somebody do this on, um, on YouTube before. Where she kind of just like took a little bit of the translucent powder that we just used. And she put it on her brows. I'm gonna take a tad bit of that so that my brows don't look so shiny. They look a little more matte, a little more natural. I'm just gonna brush off all the excess. That's another little bit. I'm just gonna drop that powder in my brows and then we're gonna brush it off real quick because I don't want it to um, stay in there. Instantly look better. Okay. Okay. Now, the last thing I want to do for this look is I'm going to take my lipstick. And this lipstick I purchased from, actually, my mom purchased from a girl back home, Sweet Tooth Cosmetics. And it was in the shade Cocoa Chocolate. It's in the shade Chocolate. Okay, and I love this because so soft, so pigmented, and most of all, matte. Okay, you just gotta give it some time to dry. So I love to like. A lot of people do it before they do their lipstick. I like to do it after. Just take my, the same eye pencil that I use for my eyebrows. Just kind of line my lips. And I could have used a darker color, but... giving everything it's matte it's it's perfect okay all right so this part um i'm basically i just took off my silk head scarf and i'm about to show you how to do the high bun head wrap this is one of my favorite head wraps that everybody asks me about so i'm just gonna go through step by step and show you how to put this head wrap on your head okay so the first step to doing the high bun head wrap which is my personal favorite one sorry i'm just in my house is you want to get um some type of cloth that's like kind of stretchy but it has a tight enough grip to stay on your head okay and the reason i say that is because you don't want to be walking around your head rub just randomly fall off so don't use a silk scarf like the one i just took off my head use something cloth okay and you just take it and you put it to the back of your head and you bring it forward like this okay and then like that little piece that was hanging out you just tuck that in now okay so now you want to take this head wrap and you want to start wrapping and you, these pieces right here like how it's all like not even just kind of like wrap over that you don't want that to be exposed and the reason i say this is because 
the better or the more perfect it looks, the better the head wrap comes out. And wrap kind of tight and then just start wrapping it in a little bun bun. I have to go back and tuck some pieces. Okay, this head wrap is not that long, so for me, I'm gonna have to do like a little under tuck type situation. Okay. And you can definitely stop here and wear it like this if you desire so desire I, however i like for my wrap to look a little bit bigger so after this step i'm just gonna like push it back just a little bit okay and then push it back like so this is already cute popping on point you can stay at this point if you want to but you don't have to okay now my other wrap that I'm gonna put on top of it is a little bit lighter brown. Oh, also, if you're gonna do two wraps, see how thin that is? You can see right th through it. If you're gonna use a thin material, make sure you have a dark material underneath so that everybody won't see your material that you use underneath. That makes it. Okay, this one is a little bit longer. Okay, so I have to fold it over. See how I got it a little bit folded right here? Okay, just a little bit so that it's not too much um extra when i put it on the back of my head okay i'm about to show you what i mean in just a second and you want to put this one same way kind of try to center it as much as you can put it to the back of your head come around this time cover your ears or you can or you can go above your ears this is better for wearing face masks you know it depends on your preference but if you're just around the house you're going out with your girls or they're coming over put it up here okay trust me now, once we have it, we want to grab all this material and same way, start twisting. But this time, we're just going to go around the previous head wrap. Okay. And like I said, cover up the parts that aren't really pretty. I have to lift that up a little bit. That's okay. Put that underneath. Tuck, 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 you know, do it how it fits you, you know, until it fits your purpose. I like mine to look all neat and cute and stuff, so I'm going to pull it and make it okay. And I got it looking all even up here at the top. This part is sticking out, so I'm just going to tuck that. And now... Oh, also, you know, you want to make your head shape look a little, you got a weird lopsided head like me. You might want to pull the breath out a little bit. Just to not, so people won't focus so much on the shape of your head. And boom, there you have it. Quick and easy, super convenient. If you're like me and you like to wake up at the last minute for work. Tell them head wraps are your best friend. You go grab your favorite pair of earrings and you're ready to rock. Matter of fact, one second, I'll be right back. All right, so here we are. I went and grabbed a pair of my favorite earrings that I bought from Kato's, I believe. Y'all, super cute, super chic. I mean, you can get all colors to go with any outfit. I can rock it, you know, with the glasses on. I can take the glasses off it. Period. Either way, it's up to you, okay? Super simple, easy look. Like, it's giving me it's giving me vacation vibes. I don't know. I don't know. You tell me, okay? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. Please, please, please share, like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your friends to tell a friend. And remember to always keep it cute. Bye.